Welcome back everyone, I'm Craven and this is called Steel. We are hmm. on the balcony of our room. I was gonna say a room, but then I realized that this connects both the girls and the boys room. So the balcony of the Viscount estate. Yes, but we are in Le Gram. And the theme for today is time to go exploring. For our main mission, I think it's just that we get our tasks. Uh, at the Brazer Guild, in yes, there is a Brazer Guild here in uh, the Gram, which I am pleasantly surprised by that. So that building will probably be the last we're gonna visit, if I don't accidentally come too close to it, of course. I am so pleased that uh, Lady Laura has finally returned home. We'll be only in the Gram for a couple of days, but thank you for your care, Prana. Oh, I do hope uh, you and your friends find some time during your visit uh, to relax. I have every intention of serving you all the best of my abilities. I made sure to prepare your bedding for you before it got uh, foggy. I've already prepared some herbal tea. So whenever you're finished for the day, just come back and wind down here. Well, thank you very much Prana, do appreciate it. Ooh. Damn, look at that sword. If the Viscount is using that, I really would love to see him in action, definitely. Who knows, maybe in the future at some point uh, we get a chance to fight him. Or, or is this Laura's room? The only reason I'm saying it is because of the teddy bears, which seems like a very weird thing to have for a Viscount. But there is a desk here, which could mean that it could be of the Vika. I'm confused. I'm getting conflicting uh, <laughs> items in this room, which is of course fine. Ah, yeah, this is a room for a Viscount, definitely. <laughs> then is the other one for Klaus or for Laura? I don't know. I can imagine that Laura is staying with the other girls because of the field study. So it wouldn't necessarily be her room itself. I don't know why, but that mist gives the game a certain color that gives me flashbacks to uh, Sukaden uh, 5. One of those games that I st really, really would uh, like to play again for you all. So yes. Alright. Yeah, Klaus? You'll find the Brazer Guild in the town's main plaza. Allow me to wish you all the best of luck uh, today in your academic endeavors. <laughs> I look forward to seeing how things go. What exactly is there to look forward to? Hmm, I wonder if he has something planned for us. I think uh, they have. I wouldn't be too surprised if we had to go to the uh, place where Laura studies her swordsmanship. And then we need to train the other students as an official task. You know, the thing that Laura mentioned in the train that she would like us to do. Show them our swordsmanship, spearmanship, fencing skills. Oh, it would be amazing if there was an actual uh, task itself. You'll find the Brazer Guild in the town's main plaza. Allow me to wish you all the best in today's uh, academic endeavors. This must be the room for the local personnel yeah this is a definitely a big house and of course just like someone mentioned in one of the past episodes the severe lack of toilets yeah it's it's never there is it in this game and I wasn't thinking about it at all before but ever since I read that comment it's in the back of my head every building we in go into I think, where is the bathroom, or the showers, or anything like that? Because I'm sure it's there, just they didn't make it. <laughs> oh, Lady Lore, you've returned. This calls for a celebration. I'll be sure to prepare the finest of meals for you and your friends tonight. Hmm, I'm looking forward to the taste of home cooking. I just asked Bem to uh, catch some fresh fish too, so I think you'll enjoy the dinner I'm preparing. You have no idea how surprised I was when I heard a few days ago that Lady Laura would be returning. Unfortunately though, 
there won't be much time for rest. The field study is essentially off-campus schoolwork, right? If so, allow me to help you out in any way that I can. Well, a good meal will definitely keep us energized, so that's very important indeed. Right, enough uh, enjoying the house of the Viscount, time to see the town. It does seem that the church is well represented here. This is like Evel, right? It's even bigger than I thought it'd be. It's quite large. If the mist would clear, you could get a better view. Well, with a little bit of luck, maybe tomorrow the mist will be a bit clearer. <laughs> One more round. Right. Wow, you can feel the intensity coming from inside. Well, it is the RC school's training hall after all. I was planning on stopping in to greet everyone, but they seem so focused right now, I'd rather not intrude. Yeah, let's head to the guild first. <laughs> oh, I would love to uh, go in there, cause they would definitely go off balance when they uh, see uh, Laura coming in. Cause if she's popular with the girls here in the town, she will definitely be popular with the guys as well. Just look into the sides if there's anything interesting. Oh, I wish Father Hemelcar would uh, take a job more seriously. I'm the one who has to make all the preparations for Mass and write reports to the Archbishop in his stead. Uh, running after him trying to fix everything he leaves undone is tiring work. And yet he remains as popular as ever thanks to the stories he tells to the children. Unbelievable. Why must Father Hamilcar be so irresponsible? Or perhaps I should be asking how someone like him managed to become a priest in the first place. It is truly a mystery. Yes, the goddess works in mysterious ways. <laughs> I do like the fact that uh, even though we are in a different town, the setup of the entire church is still the same. Different materials, but still the same vibe. Oh, hey there, Lady Laura. I didn't realize you were back in town already. I just arrived a little while ago. How have things been here at the church while I was away? Ah, same as ever, I'd say. Still no point in giving sermons to this lot when they've got more faith than I do. Hmm, and then I suppose things really haven't changed much, have they? It may not be my place to say this, but wouldn't it be wise to press put a bit more effort into your job? <laughs> nah, sorry about that. I'm just not the kind of guy who can summon up the motivation to work hard. And still, he is a priest at this church. I'm with the nun on this one. The only folks here that uh, have got their work cut out for them are your dad and Tovel, really. Your dad's away on official business pretty often, but Tovel's out of town about once a month too. For a guy as young as he is, he's got a pretty tiring, uh, trying schedule to contend with. Hey, if you want to be a racer, you got to put in the work. Especially if you want to increase your ranks. <laughs> Alright. Oh, Lady Laura, I'm so pleased to see that you've returned. Don't hesitate to ask me if you need any assistance at all. I'll be there to support you, whatever the endeavor may be. Hmm, thank you, Chloe. I appreciate your generosity. <laughs> it's my honor. I feel... I must ask, though. Just who are these distinguished credents uh, you have in tow? Oh, disgusting! <laughs> That's a slightly different uh, word. After I said red cretins, I thought... Hmm. <laughs> hmm, are you talking about my classmates? Oh, Idios, why must such filth be allowed to fester within the sights of Lady Laura's maidenly grace? Listen up, you three. Be sure to keep your appropriate distance from Lady Laura at all times, understood? Ah, I feel like he's specifically talking about the males in our uh, party. Hmm, yeah, I'm afraid that's gonna prove a little difficult. Hmm, what an irksome whelp. My apologies, she seems to be misunderstanding the situation. Is there more vile and disgusting creatures crawling upon the earth than me, the men? <laughs> Julian and Carno present a perfect example, but with their never-ending tomfoolery. They are a few exceptions, of course, like Lord Arcid. 
He's so strong and handsome. Well, I see that the Radiant Blade Master has skewed the standards for aspiring gentlemen here in the ground. <laughs> You'd uh, have to be in an airship to rise above that expectation like that. Ah, so that's how it is. So she's idolizing uh, Laura's father. And anyone who doesn't come close isn't worthy to be in the sight of Laura. Yeah, no one stands a chance with that one. <laughs> Wait, wait, did I see it right? Ooh, there's a sale going on. Nice. We came at the right time. Ooh, and two shops in one. Nice. Ah, good day, Lady Laura. I'm pleased to see you back home. If you need any armaments or have any orbit relation questions during your stay, you just come straight to me. Oh, thank you, Duncan. Your service is invaluable as always. <laughs> it's an honor to hear you say that. If you need any armaments and have any orb related questions during your stay, you just come straight to me. A friend of uh, Lady Laura's is a friend of mine. It will be an honor to help you. Alright, what do we have? Defense 3 is standard. HP 3? Nope. But just got shield. Attack 3. Movement. Action. Oh, this is gonna be a nice one. Very expensive though, but we did collect a lot of Sepitl along the way in, in the last, uh, let's say, 10, 15 episodes, so I think we can buy a lot of these. And other than that, Crystal Flood, I think that's a new one. Probably an improvement on the Hydro Cannon, so we know what we can change with that. And we have better healing ones, but I wish they just presented with one that has all healings in there, so we just have to equip one orphaned. I'm sure it's out there, but probably one of the special ones we have to get uh, during a dungeon or something. Holy breath. <laughs> a, a better version of breath, of course. All right, yeah, we definitely have to uh, check this out in the meanwhile. Uh, support self, attack twice in succession. Alters times law, allowing the user to act twice more. Is this an automatic activation or is it a magic that we need to do? What if it's automatic? This could be a very valuable one indeed. It is really expensive though, so it's probably going to take me a while to get one of these. Because I think action speaks louder than words, so that's one that we definitely have to put on everyone. So it's going to be expensive as hell. It is the reason why that's the Sephith that's the lowest of them all, so yeah. <laughs> Alright, interesting. And this has weapons and equipment as well. I will do this in between the episodes. And of course we will modify everything as well, of course, when we're at it. I just want to make sure that uh, this is the only store that we can get uh, shoes and shirts because I don't want to be tricked into buying something, talk to the next guy and then see if there are other potentially better stuff. Hmm, hello there Watto. You've been well I hope? Ah, why? Of course. We're all doing well here. Though perhaps less so on the business front. Oh? It is not really a big issue. It's just that your father rejected the order to raise taxes here. Deliveries coming through on the highway have slowed down a fair bit ever since. It is clear as day that Duke Alborea wasn't too pleased by Lord Arcee's decision. Ah, I see. Please allow me to apologize for my father's actions. You have no reason to feel responsible, you says. Indeed, deliveries by train have come through just fine, so ultimately we're not up creek without a pedal at least. We truly are pleased to see you back in the gram, Lady Laura. I look forward to receiving your instructions in the R.C. School's Art of Self-Defense again. Wow, didn't think a geezer like you would still be hitting the training hall. <laughs> we hold classes in basic self-defense once a week at the training hall, so it's easy for anyone to fit it into their schedule. I've been doing, I've been going for 60 years now. Missing my training actually throws off my whole rhythm. <laughs> That does mean that the entire town is probably trained in combat, so if they're ever attacked, the people attacking would be in trouble. <laughs> we truly are pleased to see you back in the ground, Lady Laura. 
I look forward to retrieve receiving your instruction in the Arsid School Art of Self-Defense again. So do we. Alright, so let's see what kind of specialties there are here. Ooh, a reprint. I think all of them were reprints, but still. <laughs> Alright, lots of goods. Still Terra Bomb, we are not getting one higher just yet. Well, we could go for the Celestial Bomb, it's just way too expensive. <laughs> Mm, we got a whole bunch of pendulums, which is nice to have in store, because technically if we buy four of them, we could uh, change them into the massively expensive one we found at Heimdall. What was that? Yeah, it was Heimdall, right? Yeah. So if we are still missing one or two, like if we want we have one more ochre or we want one more for extra attack, which might be nice to have on million, we could get them. We couldn't make them here, but we could buy the pendums we need to do so. And then when we get back to Trista, we can go to Mict and change them into the one that we want. Because I, I can almost think we should be able to make it there, right? I think so. Maybe. <laughs> But it's going to take a lot of money, so we have to make sure that we do grind the cash uh, if we need to. We have no idea what we will be left of our cash after we buy all the weapons and armor, of course. Uh, already thinking way too much what to do when we get back from uh, Goralia Fortress. We, sh we first need to survive that encounter before we can think about anything else. Gotta make sure we don't... A cross inside a circle. Any idea what it means? No one really knows for sure. There are a number of theories, though. Unfortunately, the meanings of most animus symbols have been lost over time. Well, it is probably in some way religious. There sure are more remnants of animism here than I expected. Hmm, there's actually a spirit monument, much like this one, out on the highway, too. One theory is that they exist as signposts to guide the spirits to this land. Because of that, people have regarded them as means to call forth spirits since the days of antiquity. Hmm, fascinating. I can only imagine what it would look uh, like if they were to succeed. Hmm, well, it's just a theory, so no one really knows what their real purpose is. Oh, I bet they're re still pretty important then. <laughs> and here I was thinking it'd be fun to have Lemmy smash them up. Hmm, I'd really appreciate it if you didn't. Hmm, <laughs> such destructive impulses. Hey, there's a reason that uh, the Chancellor gave her Lemmy. <laughs> well, we assume she got Lemmy from the Chancellor, but who knows? Maybe Lemmy was gifted to her in another way. Maybe she was raised with Lemmy by her side, as always. I don't know, I hope that maybe at some point we'll get that backstory for it. It's not necessary, but it would be really nice to have. Oh, welcome back, Lady Laura. Mm, I see you're working hard as ever, Saria. <laughs> of course. I have a question for you, though. If I might be so bold to ask, just what is your relationship with these... What's the thing with the women in this town? Why are they so hell-bent on making the men of our group look bad? <laughs> hmm, they're all my classmates. Hmm, phew. I knew uh, I could uh, trust in the purity of Lady Laura's heart. So, wait. What's she implying? Well, she's implying that uh, she gets around the school with the men, maybe? But we know Laura, she would never do that. Yes, she could of course fall in love with somebody of our class, but... It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> you may be better off not knowing, Reen. Please, take this, Lady Laura. Ooh, recipe for pasta soup, nice. Hmm, isn't this the recipe for one of Apricot's specialties? It is indeed. I figured this would be a splendid way of allowing you to enjoy the taste of home even while at Taurus. Try and make it sometimes when you find yourself longing for Lagram. <laughs> Thank you, I will. I'm pleased to see that you've made plenty of friends at the Academy, Lady Laura. 
However, hmm... I take it we don't quite measure up to the girl's lofty expectations. Sure seems that way. I wouldn't want to be in Laura's shoes, that's for sure. <laughs> Can you imagine if she ever brought someone home to, to this town? No one would accept it. <laughs> Ah, so I've started renting my boat out recently, see? I was hoping I could let you guys use it while you're here, but... It looks like Lake Ebel's spirits are feeling a bit out of sorts today. That's really a shame. It's too bad the fox hanging around. I wanted you all to see how beautiful Lake Ebel can be on a clear day. The boat's out back though, so feel free to use it if the fog clears up. And I truly hope it does. Uh, no, I just want to see what you're selling. Herb tea and pasta soup. Alright. Hmm. Before we go out there, let's have a quick look at our new recipe. Oh, we are so close in getting all of them. Alright, so I'm assuming that it will be Laura's specialty. I'll do what I can. It is her hometown dish, so that came out rather well. Technically it's shoot, right? I'll do what I can. One more, or else we'll just take it over to use this. That came out rather well. Well, if I must. Done. You'll enjoy this. All right. <laughs> Didn't expect him to uh, make uh, it a specialty. That's, I'm fine with that. All right, guys, mess All right. it up. I'll give it a try. Hmm. Huh, not bad. No, 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 no. I asked you to mess it up, uh, guys. Right. Come on, you can do I'll it. Give it a try. Perhaps the winds are feeling mischievous. <laughs> Colorless noodles. Thank you very much. All right. Wow! I didn't think that door led out here. <laughs> nice find. Well, he said you can take the boat here, but there is no boat. Did someone already take it out fishing? Ah, the fish here are all really lively bunch. I reckon that is due to the blessing of the spirits living in the lake. The fish here are a lively little bunch. <laughs> Alright, old geezer. I'll see you later when the fog clears up. Alright, while we're here, let's check upstairs as well. Well, it's the first time here. Let's, let's check out the rooms, the way they look. So even though there's nobody staying, at least we know what they can be expecting if they do. All right. All right, let's be careful that we do not run into the Razor Guild. Hey, Peru. Hmm, I see you've been doing well, Peru. <laughs> he has a big smile on his face. Oh, good day, Lady Laura. You came along at the perfect time. We have some fresh cheese made our, from our goat's milk uh, ready to smite your hunger. I'll be sure to bring some by the matter later. Hmm, I'll be looking forward to it. Tonight's dinner is sure to be that much better. <laughs> wow, you're right. <laughs> it smells so delish. Now for an itty bitty taste. Oh, no you don't. <laughs> That's quite the charming friend you have there. Oh, by the way, you wouldn't happen to have seen Carno around, would you? He's always goofing off with Julian when he should be helping me out. <sighs> I appreciate it if he took after Chloe a bit more. <laughs> well, there's always one responsible in the family when it comes to kids, and the rest will always uh, be goofing off. If not in stories, definitely in real life. <laughs> I think that's separate building. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. <laughs> okay, we're gonna avoid the front entrance as much as we can. Ah, so this is the Eisen Ridder statue. It is pretty impressive up close. It's so cool. Hmm, Saint Sandlot and the Eisen Ritter are the pride of Lagram, having been ever since the War of Alliance. When I look at this statue, I'm always reminded of my personal goal. It's been my lifelong aspiration to be as skilled a warrior as my ancestor and Saint Sandlot were. 
Wow. <laughs> I can see the ambition gleaming in her eyes. <laughs> it's not surprising everyone has their heroes after all. They sure do. Even we do. Maybe in a little bit different than she, but... You've got a wharf here? Likewise it is. We do. A ferry makes trips between here and the opposite shore. If you cross the lake, you'd be in the Sutherland province, right? <laughs> and uh, Laura is not confirming, so we've got to assume that's right. <laughs> All right. I don't. I wonder if at some point we'll be using the ferry. I mean, maybe not during this field trip, but maybe somewhere down the line. Oh, hey, it's Laura. Oh, it's really her. <laughs> we had something pretty awesome while you were gone. Oh? <laughs> we formed the Junior Eisenritter. We're here to fight for Saint Sandlot. Cool. Let me in, let me in. I'll be the evil villain. That's hardly even roleplay. <laughs> That's so cute. I assume Laura must be their Saint Sandlot then. Definitely. I can almost guarantee that. Oh, Julian thinks the Eisenrit is all about the horses, but I think the coolest part was their awesome fighting skills. Hey, Laura, teach us how to win a sword fight sometime. Only if you decide that, that you want to make swordmanship a lifelong pursuit. I am willing to teach you basic self-defense techniques at any time, though. So if that's what you'd like. Yeah, I'm gonna start going to those classes again. I've got to get stronger. <laughs> again, meaning he has dropped out at some point. <laughs> Oh, though I gotta say, how can we really be like the Iron Ritter when we don't even have any horses? Riding our goats doesn't work. I mean, we tried, but they just flung us off. Hmm, those poor goats. Listen, you can play however you'd like, but try not to cause trouble for others. Ah, we know, we know. Well, let's be honest. That's what kids do, right? They get into trouble, but that's how they learn. <laughs> on where the boundaries are. So it's fine, as long as they don't hurt the, the goats or other people. Ah, oh, good day, Lady Laura. I see you're looking well as always. Hello there, Swen. How are you doing? I'm fit as a fiddle, thank you very much. Whether you need a bricks fixed or, fixed or a wall built, you can leave it all your construction needs to good old Swen. I'm actually just about to head out the highway to fix up one of those statues there. I've noticed it tilting a bit. If you're going the same way, be careful of the fog. It can come rolling in without warning. Days like these are when spirits are most likely to begin their trickery. <laughs> That's indeed true. We'll take the utmost of care. One of the statues out on the highway is tilted a bit. I should hurry along and get it fixed before the spirits get upset over it. Maybe one of our tasks is to help him. To assist him so he doesn't get attacked while he's repairing the statue. Oh, Lady Laura, you've returned! I'm so happy that you would return to Legrand for our sake. Well, I have returned, that much is true. However, this isn't meant to be a leisurely visit, I'm afraid. I'm going to be pretty busy with my field uh, study, so keep that in mind. Oh, I just can't believe how strict Thoris is. I don't think I could deal with having so little free time. This is why we all thought Saint Estrella would be a much better fit for you. All those months without you here were just so... depressing. Every Laura last day saw my pillow stained with tears. <laughs> I see time has indulged your clinginess. Uh. <laughs> oh, how blessed I am to stand in your angelic radiance once again. Wow, talk about the hometown hero. <laughs> the people of Graham really do like Laura, and this girl even more than most. Yeah, to me that would be just so exhausting, having uh, all people that idolize you if you're walking by. Throwing petals on the ground for you to walk on, if you know what I mean. Figuratively, of course. <laughs> oh, I I'm sorry about that. Uh, you must be Lady Laura's friends from the Academy, I assume. Allow me to welcome you all. But I must warn you all men folk that your lives are forfeit should anything happen while you're guests in La Lady Laura's home. Well, aside from those dubious sounding threats, she's technically giving us a warm welcome, right? <laughs> hmm. Pay her no mind. Cindy and her friends basically say that to everyone. We assume so, yes. <laughs> ah, the spirits are still abundant here in Legram even now. We can't see them, but 
They're always here watching over us. <laughs> they seem a bit irritated today, however. Perhaps they found themselves a bit unsettled by our new visitors. The spirits are still abundant here in Legram, even now. Yes, the spirits are always watching over us. Okay, no one else here? So what else do we have? There's a Graham station, this is where we came in, and I think this will probably get us out of town. Beyond here is the highway, but we need to check in with the guild first. Agreed. Let's go and see what they've got for us to do. Ah, so we might need to go to the highway as well. For mission, of course. An extermination mission. And I will be very pleased with that. That way we can start grinding a little bit. <laughs> hmm, there's no need for us to board the train right now. Yeah, let's focus on the task at hand. And just uh, to rest assured, grinding is more for money's sake than anything else. Because I think our level is more than adequate. <laughs> Alright, let's get over to the guild and see what kind of task uh, Tovel has for us. This building is the Legram branch of the Bracer Guild. Oh, the guild emblem. I must not have noticed it earlier with all the mist. Strange. The branches in the capital were closed due to political pressure, but this one still seems to be active. The Legram branch continues to operate as it is always been. That's why I was rather surprised to find out that the capital's branches were no longer active. Hmm, come to think of it, we met a bracer back when we were in very hard for our field study. But I saw no sign of a guild branch there either. Well, it was closed a year ago. Though, as I understand it, the pressure to close came from the Duke's household, not uh, the Imperial government. Is that so? Well, phrases are an eyesore to most of those well-to-do uh, types. And they don't uh, bow to authority, you can't bribe them with mirror. They're all about protecting civilians. Give them any excuse to lean on the bracers uh, to get them out of the picture, and that's exactly what they're gonna do. Milliam, that's kind of... <laughs> you don't mince word, do you? Hmm. Choice words coming from an intelligence division's operative. Do you think you're not complicit in this? Well, it's less us and more grams. He went uh, barging into the branches in the capital himself and started telling them what they could and couldn't do. Wow. Mm, that explains the instru instructor's uh, frosty temperament uh, towards him. Man, you guys sure know how to poke a guy where it hurts, don't you? Oh. Oh, now there's a familiar face. Mm, I'm pleased to see you again, Toval. Oh? You know each other? <laughs> nah. We just ran into each other uh, once a couple of months ago. Long time no see, Laura. Sounds like uh, Sarah's keeping uh, your nose to the grindstone, huh? Wait, so... Ah, you must be a former associate of our instructor, I take it. Pretty much. Brazer Tovel. I'm Tovel Rondeneur. A brazer with the guild here in the Empire. <laughs> Good to meet you, ladies and gents of Class 7. This uh, Brazer Guild does look pretty active with all the boxes, papers and all that kind of stuff. Wait a minute. So, it wasn't a coincidence that we ran into you in Berea Heart. Hmm, <laughs> bingo. Sarah told me you were going to be there. She uh, wanted me to keep an eye out uh, for you and step in if you ever got in a real tight spot. But she insisted I play it casual and not give myself away. Man, that part was a lot harder than I thought it would be. I had no idea. Thank you so much for all your assistance back then. Yeah, we wouldn't have been able to bust Machias out without your help. You may not have directly assisted me, but I suppose you have my thanks nonetheless. <laughs> You're welcome. Cyrus repaid that debt in full though, so don't worry about it. Hmm, interesting. I had no idea that you'd already met some of the members of our class. Incidentally, Tovel, the girl standing here in Erebonia certainly seems to have shifted over the past two years. I do notice now that 
if Laura was in our party when we worry Beret hard, it would have been an entirely different discussion because she would be sitting there looking over and saying, Tofel, is that you? So they did plan it really well because basically I think Sarah didn't put Laura in our team basically because of the fact that they would potentially meet Tovel and she didn't want his cover to be blown. Probably. Could be reading too much into it, but I do like that idea. <laughs> hey, no doubt. Basically every branch here in the Empire was shut down after the government started putting pressure on us. Some of us found work in different fields like Sarah, others transferred to branches outside the country. But we all agree to get back together if we can ever resume operations in Erebonia again. Until then, we're just trying to keep a low profile, escaping out a living for ourselves. Hmm, it sounds like a difficult life. Still, with the guild having to decrease its presence, isn't there more than enough work for the remaining branches? I wish. The Railway Military Police deals with a lot of the stuff we would handle before. Your little lady friend in particular keeps herself pretty busy. Oh, you mean Claire? Yep, she sure is a hard worker. Although, with all the time she spends on work, it's no wonder she doesn't have a boyfriend. <laughs> Milium. I'm not sure you should go around sharing the details of people's private lives without their consent. <laughs> well, if I find enough work to keep the lights on here anyway. And this branch has the Vicon's approval, so we can display our sign without getting into trouble. Ah, so that's how it is. Well, it's nice to hear that the Viscount seems pretty supportive of the guild. Hmm, he seems to find much of himself in the Brace's way of life. Self-reliance, pride and a focus on helping others. He's long said that if he were free of other responsibilities, he would join the guild and work as a Brace himself. Oh my, that seems very... Hmm, I hardly think a man who owns territory in the Empire could just up and join the Bracers. Hmm, the Radiant Blade Master himself is a Bracer, huh? In terms of strength and standing, he's probably on par with Cassius Bright. <laughs> I'll bet he'd make S rank on the spot. Y you know Cassius Bright? I believe he's currently Brigadier General in the Librarian Army, as well as the bearer of the title Divine Blade. <laughs> Guess I should expect no less from a member of the Intelligence Division. Anyway, that's how the Viscount ended up asking me to sort out some tasks for your field study. Let me give those to you now. <laughs> Day 1 Assigned Tasks right. Many hands make light work. I need someone to replace a lot of orbman lights along the highway. If you like putting lights into things, you can find me at Wato store. We definitely do like that. We've done it... Uh, in previous games, and I think in this one as well when we were in Keldic. A monster has been spotted roving the Ebel Highway, and he's a big one. Monster, Coco Dark, at the Ebel Highway. I request that uh, Class 7 deals with this threat as soon as possibly can. Alright, this is required. I wish for our Lady Laura and you, her classmates, to engage in a friendly training bout against students of the R State School. When you have prepared sufficiently, please make your way to the training hall, which is down the stairs, outside the mansion and to the right. So exactly what uh, Laura wanted is going to happen. <laughs> Butler Klaus made it happen. <laughs> Study area is defined as 200 cells radius around Legram. Each student must record his or her activities daily to be remitted to the instructor upon request. Oh, oh, so this is how your field studies go. Generally, yeah. Should we come back tomorrow to pick up our next set of tasks? Uh, yeah, I've got some more work I could use your help with. We're pretty short-handed here, so we've got a real monster of uh, backlog building up. I'm counting on you to pave the way to easy street for me, okay? <laughs> Will do. Alright then, let's waste no time getting started. Hmm, it looks like one of these requests is from the training hall. It seems to be from Klaus. Got a monster extermination request too. We'll have to head out onto the highway for that one. Hmm, it would be nice if we could cover as many of the townspeople's requests as possible too. Oh, this is so cool! Yeah, I can imagine William 
definitely wanting to fight at uh, the school. I can imagine, sir. <laughs> I couldn't help but notice that Sarah set uh, you up with a curriculum really similar to the work we braces do. I guess actual bracer work like stuff uh, I've been throwing at you must come pretty naturally uh, to you at this point. <laughs> there is some truth in that, for sure. By the way, would you mind if I ask you something? Hmm? Far away. I know you gave us a hint back at the bar in very hard, but there's also the fact that instructor Sarah showed up perfect timing right when we needed her. Hmm, your timing is a little too convenient. Did you come after receiving word from the provincial army? Nope. I actually heard about what's happening a little earlier from a friend of mine. As soon as the news reached my ears, I shot to my feet and got right in contact with the director here. And he was kind enough to give me a ride on his airship back from the capital. Was that your doing? <laughs> well, uh, you see... Ah, so essentially things worked out for us thanks to his pulling strings behind the scenes. I see that the braces live up to their reputation. <laughs> I guess it makes sense when they're not uh, too popular with certain folks. Uh, listen, that was just a one-off, alright? I jumped through some serious hoops to make sure everything worked out, you know? <laughs> We've been uh, in his debt all this time without even realizing it. Indeed, I'm glad to know we can count on someone as reliable as him as an ally. Hey, who knows, maybe in the future he'll even fight with us. Because he's a bracer, so I know he can fight, so I would very much like that. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm leaving this in your hands. Man, it's really been a while since I just got to kick back here at the guild. Keep up the good work, okay? I want to really savor my little breaks here. Oh, let me at least tell you where you can find Monster in your mission. It's out on the highway. Not a pretty good distance from town. Probably close to 200 cells. If I had to guess, right at the edge of your field study area. Seems to be a pretty mean one too. So make sure you're all ready before you take that swing for a swing. Oh, we definitely, we definitely will. <laughs> we cannot take missions from the board. We're <laughs> not a member of the Brazer Guild. At least not at this point. Alright, so before we go out to the highway, uh, we also have a mission there to switch out if you like. So I think picking up that request right now will be very beneficial so we can do them at the same time. And... I haven't seen any fishing spot, but I'm pretty sure there has to be one here in town, right? So, do we want to run for it? Alright, give me that fishing spot. I'm just running uh, along the edges, hoping to get a reaction. This looks like a nice spot. And there it is. Because, come on, we are at the lake. Known for fishing, there has to be at least one fishing spot. Huh. Alright, give me something new. No, oh, there's a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. Wow, this is a big one! Hell yeah! <laughs> Jesus. And a lot of points as well. Huh. Alright, give me another big one. Maybe the Lord of the Lake? <laughs> no, I don't want crabs. Come on, we got it. Damn. It's so wow, big, this is a big one. it really fights us. Huh. Tree crabs, really? Should we use one ground bait at some point just to be able to catch a few more? Not wow, crabs, but I mean the potential of other fish. Because I'm sure it's not just crabs that's in this lake, right? Alright, now get this fishing done. I'm pretty sure if we'd had one at that dock over there, we'd have already seen it. Because that dock is way too narrow to not have uh, activated it then. Alright. Okay, let's get uh, to the store.
Ah, welcome everyone. I hope the day is treating you well. Tofal told you about my request, right? That's right. You wanted us to do something with the road lamps, right? Uh, could we ask you for some further information about how to do that? Of course. Uh, it can take quite a while though. Are you sure you have the time to do it? Of course. Yeah, that shouldn't be an issue. Just uh, explain what it is you'd like us to do uh, while we get to it. Alright, uh, here is how it'll go. I'm going to presume you all know a road lamp is at this point, and you probably also know that they require regular maintenance in order to function as they should. That's especially true here on the gram, since the moisture from the fog causes their circuits to short more frequently. I put in a request for Tovel to inspect them not too long ago actually. To my surprise, he discovered that almost all of the lamps close to town are in need of some maintenance work. Oh, I assume you want us to replace them all in one go then. That is correct. To be more specific, I'd like for you to replace their orbit lights. Ah, oh, it does seem like a long, troublesome task, the kind I'd normally pay someone else to do. The road lamps serve as a safety measure for travelers along the highway though, so it is important. Hmm, sounds as much fun as picking lint out of my belly button. Oh well, nothing uh, we can do about it. Hmm, that does seem uh, like something Tova would usually handle himself though. Isn't that right? It is. He'd probably laugh at us if a group of promising students weren't able to change a few lights, I'll bet. It really takes me back to our field study in Celtic, though. Hmm, that is right. We had to do something like this back then. I suppose every town needs working uh, road lamps. So, you're practically pros already, then? Hmm, hardly. I've uh, finally managed to block off any memory of our group's first field study. <laughs> ah, no fair, you guys. Stop remembering stuff that I wasn't here for. <laughs> That's what you get for showing up late to the party. Anyway, I assume the road lamps here also need a code to open their maintenance panel? Not quite. The lamps here on the ground use a key for access instead. Which means you'll be needing this. Thank you, cause each lamp will probably have its own code. It will be way too hard for me to remember. <laughs> well, at least it should make things simpler this way. Yeah, I'm kind of glad I don't need to remember a code this time. And here are the replacement orbit lights you'll need as well. 14? Damn, this is gonna be busy work. Ah, that's a lot of lights. Hmm, A1 to A5, B1 to B9. Hmm, they're all marked with letters and numbers. That they are. Each one matches up with the road lamp it should be used in. Use an A1 light in the lamp with the A1 written on it. And so on. It's not exactly advanced calculus. So, do you need any pointers on how to change them out? No, I remember how to do it from last time, so I think we'll be fine. Hmm, well, that seems to be everything we need to get started. We'll be on our way then. Good luck. Alright, so we got all the lamps we need to repair them. And considering we're gonna be going down the road to hit the monster, we can do two things at the same time. So. Just before we close up the episode for today, let's look at the highway. Yeah, that way I can easily walk over it, beat a few monsters and stuff, have some fun with it. It looks like the fog's just as thick on the highway as it is in town. Hmm, it goes to a long way towards keeping its temperature down, but it certainly doesn't help with the visibility. True, even we locals lose our sense of direction out on the highway sometimes. But ever since they built a railway through here, there haven't been nearly as many people traveling this road. Well, we need to pay extra attention to our surroundings to make sure that we don't become lost. That would be wise, and don't forget, there's no telling when uh, some beast may try to jump out at us. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go! Well... We know that the lamps need to be changed on this road, so there is a higher than normal chance that uh, we'll get attacked by monsters. I guess so we can actually see them and that they're not invisible because of the fog. Alright, we have a mushroom over there. It feels almost magical. I know, like if you just wait long enough you might see a fairy or something. I'm more of a, if we wait long enough, we might see Celeste, 
Selene, uh, go by. <laughs> oh, wait. They were already... Oh! These are the lights. Okay, I, I was more thinking like an actual lamp. <laughs> Alright, that uh, shouldn't be too hard then. Well, I won't be changing them today. We'll be changing them in the next episode. At least for now. Let's check on the map. Yeah, so we've got a couple of monsters on this part as well. So it wouldn't be too bad. And we know that at the end of the road, just before we get to the maximum place where we can go, that's where we find the extermination uh, monster, which we'll, we'll be doing on the next episode. But until then, I wish you all a great night, morning, day, wherever you are. And if you're still here, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and be back next time as we go hunt down a monster on the road. See you then. Bye-bye.